Good morning! It's a beautiful day here in Japan. My name is Stuart, this is Cheap Japan, and I'm here today to tell you about the Tokyo Creative offline event that I attended recently in Shibuya and to work out whether it was cheap. To do this, I'm going to give a general analysis of my day very swiftly, and then we'll talk about the event in more detail, and then the thereafter how I got home to give you a good cost analysis for the whole day to see whether it was worth the trip. So let's start that off. I'm about 45 kilometers away from Shibuya, so that involves taking two trains, one to Weno and one to Shibuya. The journey itself took about an hour and a half to get there. After the train and exiting the station, I got the chance to watch an idol group performing on stage outside of the station. Following that, I went across Shibuya Crossing. Just down the road, there was another performance going on, a contest of some sorts. Went past the Mega Donkey. Got to a road where the Tokyo Pride Festival was commencing and going past. Bought lunch, just 230 yen for two rice balls, tidy. Then cracked on, found the capsule hotel where the event was taking place, the Millennials, and went on inside. Now for a bit of background about the event itself. The event lasted for three hours, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. The ticket cost 3,500 yen for myself, but if you were a member of the Tokyo Creative Learn or the online service they have, you got a discount on the ticket. The theme for the event was six ways to grow your YouTube. At the event there were three panelists. There was Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan. There was Sharla from Sharla in Japan or Sharmanda. And there was Aki from Aki Dearest. And the hosts for this event were Chris Okano, the CEO of Tokyo Creative, and Shiori, their Chief Community Officer. So, doors open at 2.30 and for the first 30 minutes you can mingle for a bit. Now within the price of your ticket, I got a free drink, which I went up to the bar area to get, which I grabbed a beer from the man himself, Joey, the anime man who was behind the desk. This led to the event to feel like a very team oriented event. It's good to see someone such a big YouTuber himself to be just doing such a simple job. It was a nice touch. So after everyone had finished mingling with each other and everyone had sat down, the event started. And the first hour of this event, the first portion, was a presentation about the six ways to grow your YouTube. An interesting point to add is that Chris Ocano asked the audience to put their hands up to find out who was here as a fan or a content creator. And it was really a 50-50 split, which is very interesting considering the title of the event. For the first hour, the presentation commenced and the three panelists gave their six, their own personal six points that they felt uh, would help grow your YouTube. Some of the points interlinked. For me personally, I found this segment was very interesting and very informative. I do think some of these points are out there online, um, but it's good to have all this data collected into one position, one place, and also to have their own personal perspective on each point. That was really valuable in itself. Now next up was an hour's worth of Q&A where the audience got a chance to ask the panelists some questions. Uh, this created quite an interesting environment because 50% of the audience were fans of the panelists themselves and 50% of the audience were content creators. At this point, when a content creator was asking a question to the panelists, most of the time it was from a business standpoint rather than a personal interest standpoint. Now the panelists put across the fact that they felt to succeed in the long term on YouTube, you need to be able to uh, do something that you are interested in so that then your content is fun for you to make and it's enjoyable for you uh, during that time you're making it and not to worry so much about numbers of followers or subscribers. That contradicts the material that I said was available earlier on YouTube and on the web, which made it very interesting to hear that side of the debate. A lot of the content you can find on the points they made online hits it at a business standpoint rather than a personal interest standpoint. A lot of it is about growing subscribers fast or something along those lines so you can make a quick buck, but their belief 
is that you shouldn't do that and you should look towards making doing something towards a personal interest of your choice so that you enjoy it in the long term for me that was interesting and really made value for this segment after this there was an hour's chance to mingle with the people who attended the event once again but also in this time you got the chance to talk to the tokyo creative team and the panelists that were there you got the chance to talk to them find out a bit more about them and take a photo of them so this was a great opportunity for anyone who wants to come to one of these events and also by having the opportunity to mingle with the rest of the attendees it was a great chance to network as a content creator or meet other fans who are there as well and then the event wrapped up around about 6 15 uh, after that I started my travel home stopped off a Weno grabbed some ramen wasn't the cheapest but we are in the middle of Tokyo and it was at the station so it was super convenient and then continue my travel home so the event itself was it cheap that is a fantastic question and for me it was a hundred percent value for money and more so as a content creator i found the content they said during the presentation portion portion and the q a was super super interesting um, especially considering it was from their point of view like I said, some of the points from the presentation you can find if you search for it online. There's a lot of content out there nowadays on YouTube, but most of it is from like a business standpoint and if you want to make money. Whereas their idea is if it's of a personal interest, then you're more likely to last a longer time. You're more likely to enjoy every piece of content you make. So I found that very, very interesting to listen to. As a fan, wow, it is well beyond value for money because you could have an hour's Q&A with the panelists and then you get to meet them and take a photo with them and you could talk to several different uh, popular YouTubers there at the event so yeah 100% value for money uh, I kind of look at it as if I was going to a convention for something I enjoyed so I enjoy wrestling if I went to a wrestling convention you're talking 15 20 30 pounds just to meet the person take a photo with them whereas you could meet several prominent YouTube stars at this event and it's all encompassed within the money you pay for the tickets. As for a whole day out, was it worth my money and time to go all the way there and come all the way back? I definitely think so. I look at it also in another perspective, whereas if I wanted to go see a football match in England, where the ticket from a Premier League game is around about 30 to 50 and can go up to 80 pounds for a ticket just to see a match. Now, that's not including the travel, that's just for the game itself and you're just getting a seat you're just watching the match you don't get to meet anyone there's no food there's no drink nothing included in that price that's just the ticket so to consider that the price of my whole day was around about the same as an average price for a premier league ticket it's more than value for money you know especially as i'm a fan as well as a wanting to be a content creator like i said so if i look a bit tired in this i've just woken up and i'm pretty knackered from the previous week it's been pretty busy uh, luckily it's golden week though so there was no work which is great if you want to find me on instagram twitter and facebook you can under the guise of cheap jpn that's c h e a p j p n i am there any questions you've got please send them in i'll try and help you out as much as possible and i look forward to seeing you next time ciao